channel. My name is Martine, and if you are new here, I do videos on Vedic astrology mainly, but also with some tropical astrology insights. And I focus on both relationship and natal astrology. And if you like this video and you would like to see more content from me, please like, su subscribe, and hit the notifications bell to see when I will post a new video. And also, if you're interested in a personal consultation, I do consultations on a wide variety of topics, and I also do tarot readings. You can check out the video description. I will leave my contact information there. Thank you. And also, recently, I have started a tarot channel. If you are interested in tarot, please check it out. Again, I will link my channel in the video description or in the pinned comment. You can go ahead and check it out if you're interested in tarot and also maybe subscribe. It would be greatly appreciated. And of course, it's free. Okay, thank you. And before I get into the topic, once again, I would uh, remind you to please subscribe to my channel. I have been checking the video uh, videos analytics on my channel and realized that only roughly one third of the people who regularly watch my videos ha are subscribed to my channel. So please subscribe if you have enjoyed any of my videos. It is the easiest way to, to support me and my channel. And it's also free, okay? It only takes a second. So please subscribe. Okay, thank you. And today's topic is going to be, like I mentioned in the community tab, about Saturn-Venus um, aspects in synastry. This video is going to be mainly on the positive Saturn-Venus Venus aspect, so conjunction, um, trine, sextile, not so much square and opposition, although I might be mentioning those a little bit as well. But as an introduction, before I get into the topic at hand, this is mainly going to be focusing on the positive aspects of these this synastry, um, synastry inter aspect. And I know that some of you who maybe have seen a video I posted a while back where I talked about all the negative outcomes, potentially negative outcomes of Saturn aspects in synastry. Some of you might be wondering, okay, have you changed your mind or something? <laughs> um, no, but like I also mentioned in that video, because I know I had a bunch of people commenting under that video being like, what is this all negative now? Um, no, it is not all negative. I still stand by everything I said in that video. I was talking about the potential pitfalls associated with having Saturn heavy aspects in synastry in that video. I also will be linking it in the video description if you're interested to find out more, more about it, you can check it out. But this is also, um, this today's video is going to be about the positive aspects of Venus and Saturn together in synastry, okay? So, yes, I'm not trying to say that Saturn is synastry, nor did I say in that video can only have negative outcomes. That's what I'm trying to emphasize here. Okay, that being said, so the topic at hand, okay. I'm gonna start with the meaning, the significations associated with each planet. So Saturn, what does Saturn stand for? I have talked about this in multiple other videos, but it's important to go over these things once again. So it, Saturn is about our fears, our responsibilities, our physical limitations in this material world. This is why Saturn also can speak of longevity. Um, it's also, well, Saturn also has to do with time, how we perceive time, how we manage time, because time, like everything else in this material physical world, is a material resource that has to be planned and you know, used carefully and all that. Everything that has to do with management of resources is Saturn. This is, and also while I'm at the topic of Saturn being connected to time, this is why Saturn can also hint towards a person's longevity in the horoscope. Also why Saturn in general has to do with things like durability, patience, um, endurance, so things that develop over long periods of time. This is why Capricorn, which is the only sign that Saturn rules entirely, there's also Aquarius that Saturn co-rules with Rahu, 
Uh, but uh, Capricorn is entirely ruled by Saturn, and the sign of Capricorn is about climbing the hill of uh, social status, basically. However, it's not just about social status. It's also about anything to do with um, creating lasting results, being thorough, um, you know, taking things step by step, break by break, basically, um, and climbing your way to the top slowly or achieving a goal that takes a long time to accomplish, basically. This is Saturn. Um, so this is a more general thing. Also, because of all the things that I have mentioned so far, uh, Saturn is also connected to discipline, focus, like I said, staying power, endurance, patience, stability. And in medical astrology, Saturn represents the, uh, Saturn rules, I mean, the skeleton, the bones in the body, to some extent, the teeth. So, and also to a negative extent, it can rule well, all the ailments connected to bones and teeth, but also anything to do with mineral, mineral deposits in the body that shouldn't be there can show a bad Saturn activity. Um, in general, actually, uh, when it comes to the world, elements in nature, Saturn rules stones, rocks, um, minerals, also same as well. Basically, same as it rules the bones of the body, you know, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, that kind of thing. So, yeah, <laughs> just as it rules the bones in our body, it rules it rules um, the, the stones and the minerals. So, basically, bones are also made of minerals. That's, what I, that's where I'm getting at. Um, yeah, this is why people who have strong Saturn are, can be interested in things like geology, um, what do you call it, speleology, speleology, speleology I think, uh, study of caves. Um, yeah, just things like that, or they'll be passionate about crystals, rocks, gemstones, that kind of thing. Um, so also geographically, Saturn rules areas that are basically not particularly welcoming areas that are hard to live in, like Antarctica, desert areas, places that are very hot and arid or very, um, very cold And also socially, it Saturn rules things like, um, first of all, Saturn is actually the archetype of the old person, the old woman, especially old woman, because Saturn is actually a feminine energy, but few people take this into account. Because of the harshness associated with this planet, oftentimes it is not um, treated as a feminine energy, but it is at its core a very feminine energy. <laughs> It's just not feminine according to, well, the, let's say, social, general social um, definitions of what feminine should look like, especially in societies heavily influenced by Abrahamic religions. But Saturn definitely has to do with feminine energy. It's about introversion. Uh, it's definitely not like a flamboyant, um, extravagant hyper energetic uh, sort of energy it's about planning and being attentive to detail and all these things are basically well pretty feminine um also when it comes to society in general saturn uh rules manual labor um underprivileged classes i don't know if i also mentioned this uh yes underprivileged people people from poor backgrounds traditionally in vedic astrology saturn has also been connected to beggars um, also servants, people who serve others, people that are in charge of cleaning, generally any kind of repetitive work. Um, yeah, manual labor. Also anything to do with resources of the earth, like the oil industry, um, mineral extraction, stuff like that. Anything to do with resources of the earth. So this is pretty much Saturn in a nutshell. And now Venus, what does Venus stand for? Venus is pretty much the opposite. Well, not not exactly the opposite, but it is kind of a very different energy in some ways than Saturn. Because Saturn, uh, right, this is something I should have mentioned, Saturn is about 
well, the bare rock of things, okay? Saturn is not about embellishments. It's definitely hand-in-hand hand with minimalism, for instance. The current trend of minimalism um, I probably comes from the Saturn-ruled side of the Age of Aquarius because Aquarius is co-ruled by Saturn, the other co-ruler being Rahu. Um, right, but I digress. And Venus, contrary to Saturn is all about beauty, it's about lush things, it's, you know, not caring about economy or being frugal. Um, it's about everything to do with beauty, comfort, the soft life, quote-unquote. Um, Venus is also about femininity and feminine charm. Unlike the moon, Venus is about a cultivated femininity, femininity so it's about the power to seduce, the power to make yourself attractive, your power of attraction, how you go about attracting the things you want or people that you want. Um, so it is a kind of a passive energy generally, <clears throat> or rather not so much passive, but about using indirect means to get what you want. So subtle ways by using connections, relations, not so much hard work. Um, Venus also rules social graces, the arts and beauty, love, especially romantic or erotic love. Venus is also connected to, like I said, because it's connected to everything that has to do with leisure and the five senses as well. Um, everything we enjoy through the five senses it is connected to the sweets industry, um, the beauty industry, cosmetics, anything to do with beautifying in general, people, locations, etc., decorations, um, embellishments, jewelry, fashion design. Um, so anything to do with beauty and beautification or beautifying the surroundings or beautifying one's appearance is ruled by Venus. Venus is also the natural karaka of marriage. It's also the karaka of the D9 chart or the Navamsha chart. So... The spouse, especially in a man's chart, is signified by Venus, but also to some extent in a woman's chart, um, it's, it also signifies the spouse, especially if you are gay or, um, you know, attracted to women. Counseling, also anything to do with counseling, one-on-one -on -one interactions is also ruled by Venus. So diplomacy, negotiations, um contracts, stuff like that, anything, therapy, even healing professions to some extent are connected to Venus. Um, also, Venus is connected to lush environments like gardens because it's connected to beauty and comfort. And anything to do with the easy life. And also in medical astrology, Venus rules um, the sexual cells, like the sperm for men and the ovum for women. And it rules, to some extent, feminine hormones. It's also It also rules anything to do with the five senses. Um, and also, to some extent, rules over the liver and the pancreas. I I have written down some notes so that I don't <laughs> so that I don't uh, go off topic too often because I have that tendency. So um, yeah, going on. So in general, going back to the original topic, in general, Saturn and Venus are friends in astrology, and this is because both of them are feminine. Really, neither of these energies like loudness or aggression or even overt displays of emotions. Um, both are rather inwardly facing in energies. Basically, yes, like all feminine energies, they're basically more about their inner universe. You know, they don't display, um, how should I put it? Like they don't often lead to or they don't often lead the natives that have strong energies from these planets to be flamboyant or to really show their energy, you know, in an aggressive outward manner. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, both of these planets like to conserve energy rather than expel, basically because Venus, from the Venus point of view, it's all about 
uh, living the soft life uh, because Venus is about, you know, sugar, spice and everything nice. So it's everything about pleasure and enjoyment, especially pleasure because it's about everything we enjoy through the five senses. Um, while Saturn, although Saturn is a much more, let's say, focused, uh, disciplined and motivated energy, um, it's also equally focused on saving energy because of its low reserves. Okay, so think of Saturn being connected to a person in old age, especially an old woman or an old man. Um, basically, even though they still want to get a lot of things done, they don't have the same level of energy as a younger person. So they have to be very smart about when and how they act. This is why Saturn has to do with anything in the world that uh, speaks of preserving energy and resources, time, resources, you know, um, renewable, non-renewable resources, everything to do with this is connected to Saturn. It's all about managing what you have at your disposal, making the most of it. Um, this is why Saturnians are very good planners, very good administrators, managers, strategists, and all that. Not so much, maybe strategists, not so much. You would have to see some Mars going on there as well. But very good planners, very good administrators and managers. Um, so Saturn-Venus contacts in general, in synastry, create a steady patient exchange or flow of energy uh, between two people. I am mainly going to talk about, well, chart interaspects, meaning aspects between two individual charts. Um, so one person's Saturn aspecting the other person's Venus or the other way around, one person's Venus aspecting the other person's Saturn. Not so much uh, the composite chart. I'm going to talk a little bit about the composite chart towards the end of the video. <laughs> um, when it comes to the easy aspects, this is what I'm going to be tackling in this video. I'm going to do a separate video at some point about the hard aspects. But this is mainly about the easy aspects, okay? So that means conjunction, trine, sextile, to some extent semi-sextile as well. So with the easy aspects, especially the conjunction between these planets, the two people will work great together, especially when it comes to building a solid, stable connection and financial security. Saturn, the Saturn person will be the one who is more focused on stabilizing Venus's tendency to be, um, you know, a little bit impulsive, a little bit wasteful, maybe capricious when it comes to spending, you know, because Venus, again, is going to go for everything that is shiny and new and gives them pleasure and they want to get without thinking too much about the consequences or the budget. So the Saturn person will teach the Venus person how to plan, how to save money, while the Venus person, in turn, can help the Saturn person to loosen up a little bit and to enjoy life from time to time, um, even by, you know, splurging on material things or things that they both enjoy from time to time. Financially, they make a really good team and they will gradually create stability and even wealth. Of course, I do mention this in every video. You have to look at everything else that is happening within these horoscopes. These are just some isolated aspects that I am describing, but there could be other placements and other aspects influencing this and therefore influencing the outcome of this aspect, how it plays out in synastry. And of course, it's really important to look at what signs these aspects take place in and the rulers and what they're doing and all that stuff that I have mentioned many times in many videos. Okay, so when it comes to love, the love connection, this can definitely turn into a long-lasting connection. I have also talked about this in that video where I mainly focused on the negative outcome of being in a Saturn-dominant relationship. Um, that, well, there the main idea that I talked about is the fact that Saturn can lock people into relationships where there is really 
little to no compatibility, but people get stuck in it out of fear or out of convenience or just for different material reasons. But here I'm going to focus on the positive, and especially with this aspect of Venus, when you have easy aspects, the conjunction, the trine, the sextile, this can definitely show a very strong bond that can withstand the test of time. Um, because the Saturn person is going to feel, you know, that they would naturally want to commit to the Venus person. And the Venus person is going to feel the support and the stability of the Saturn person, which helps them loosen up and w relax and live the soft life as the Venus person generally wants to live. So, um, in more detail, okay, Saturn will feel a strong desire to commit to Venus because Venus really seems like a little bit more naive, more innocent of the world. Of course, whether Venus actually is like that or not is debatable, but this is how the Saturn person will generally per perceive the Venus person. And also because Venus by the Venus person, by the way that they interact to the Saturn person, will basically brighten up the Saturn person's mood and their life because of their sweetness and, you know, their creativity and usually their affectionate nature. The Venus person will find Saturn very stable, very reliable, which helps her relax and make the most of her loving, artistic ways. Obviously, I'm using her and him and her and whatever. I'm talking about the planets and the energies. Of course, this can uh, this plays out irrespective of the gender of the two people. In fact, I would say with this, re with respect to this aspect. Um, well, I'm going to talk a little bit about different genders as well, but with respect to this aspect, the gender of the two people actually doesn't even play out that much, I would say. Okay, so together they can really work well, especially in artistic fields or anything related to mostly uh, Venus-ruled professions. And the reason I say mostly Venus-ruled professions is because it's unlikely that the Venus person is actually going to um, you know, follow Saturn's more, um, how should I put it, let's say tougher lines of interest, uh, like, or occupations, like, uh, dealing with mining or oil rigs or sanitation or, you know, anything like that, because, yeah, like I said, Venus is all about sugar, spice, and everything nice. <laughs> Um, so basically, yes, as, as long as Saturn is willing to help Venus, they can make a good business together or a good team together. So they could be working in anything to do with uh, arts um, or running a gem sto store, for instance, gems stone store <laughs> uh, or jewelry store. They could be running a sweets factory or sweets shop or a patisserie or a beauty salon. Anything to do with Venus connected professions, anything that is, um, you know, focused on women more specifically as well, or focused on marriage. Okay, so businesses dealing in contracts, maybe even legal businesses, negotiations, stuff like that. Um, the potentially negative side of this aspect is usually. Is usually not felt so strongly um, with the easy aspects. So the conjunction, the trine, the sextile. It's more felt with the negative ones, especially the square. Uh, and mainly the negative aspects have to do with Saturn being too, too harsh, sometimes too critical, too cold towards Venus, not showing affection because... The Saturn person is generally going to be more contained. Um, so, and especially when you have harsher aspects, sometimes even with the conjunction or the other easy, easy aspects, the trine and the sextile, you can sometimes see the negative expression as well, um, that the Saturn person can be too critical, too cold, um, you know, or too frugal and too strict, you know, and uh, criticizes Venus for being frivolous or for not planning ahead um so basically the solution to this is that the saturn person has to learn to control themselves they have to 
tone down their critical voices towards the Venus person because the Venus person needs to feel safe in this connection. As long as the Venus person feels supported and loved by the Saturn person, she will return this affection tenfold, okay, and will reward the Saturn person with all the affection and the sweetness and also will contribute to the relationship with her creativity, diplomacy, you know, ten, and also social graces sometimes. These two people can you know, um, work very well in society, especially if these aspects are found in the composite chart. Okay, so yes, this is something that I wanted to say with respect to this aspect. Also, another thing that you will notice is that couples that have the, these aspects in synastry whether it's in between their two charts or in the composite chart i would say even more strongly in the composite chart uh and when i say these aspects i'm mainly talking about the easy aspects so the conjunction the trine the sextile when you do see couples like this they will rarely display their affection openly towards one another in public this is because of this, well, because of the Saturn tendency mainly to control, to con well, I guess to control Venus, but that sounds a little bit negative. It's not necessarily negative, it's just that in the presence of Saturn, Venus will be a little bit more self-conscious. That's also one way to look at it. But then it's also because these two together will create a kind of like... Um, you know, a, a lot of intimacy and a lot of privacy within their relationship and basically learn to shield themselves and their more sensitive, vulnerable feelings from the rest of the world and maintain this privacy and intimacy between the two of them. Um, <clears throat> so sometimes, like, this is uh, one way that you can look at it is that people who have this aspect, these aspects in synastry, uh, and you're going to see some in the examples when I get to them as well. Like they could come across as maybe people who, you know, are not particularly in love <laughs> or um, they are not particularly romantic, but that's not the case. It's just that they learn to not show their feelings in public. So between the two of them, you don't know what else is. It depends a lot on what else is happening in synastry. Uh, to actually see how passionate these people are going to be together. But um, this aspect in itself just shows that sometimes they just don't even need to show their affection towards one another, um, you know, even when they are just the in between the two of them in private because they're just so secure in each other's uh, connection, really, when this is a positive aspect. Okay, so <clears throat> when it comes to... Um, gender differences. I would say there is a slight difference sometimes because, well, a slight difference, not always. As far as I've seen, also looking at charts and even now looking at some of the examples of famous couples that I've come across, um, there isn't much of a difference because um, the, both of these planets are feminine. Like I said, both of them kind of show the similar parts of a person's psyche, similar in some ways. Um, so, but usually I would say with respect to, let's say, traditional quote-unquote gender roles, it's maybe a little bit more favorable if the man is the Saturn and the woman is the Venus. But this doesn't always have to be the case. And even in the examples that I have found, I think <clears throat> you will see that Sometimes it's the other way around and the couple has been very long lasting. So the woman is the Saturn, the man is the Venus. Okay, so it's a little bit more desirable though because Saturn is going to be generally the one that kind of holds the reins on Venus. <laughs> so Saturn is going to be the one that is more stabilizing. So again, going back to what women need, even biologically, I would say the fact that women need more security in relationships um, somehow, let's say, yes, could, it could be more favorable for the woman to be the Venus. When it's in the composite chart, it's equally felt by both of them. So they will basically take turns in playing either the Venus or the Saturn in the relationship. That being said, since I got to this topic, um, talking about the Saturn-Venus in composite chart, um, I'm going to leave the negative... <laughs> 
I, I, there are definitely things that I could say about the negative aspects, but I'm going to leave that for a future video where I'm going to talk about the negative aspects. <clears throat> but what I will say about the composite chart is that generally what, when you see the conjunction, the trine, the sextile, these really tend to help create a stable, solid relationship. Um, the conjunction is probably the most potentially problematic in the composite chart because even though it shows like a really strong glue, like the two people feel like they're, they have a sense of purpose together, like they're together for a reason, like they're supposed to work on each other. There's also a mutual desire when you have the conjunction in the composite chart, there's a mutual desire to work on the relationship generally. Of course, once again, you have to look at what else is happening in this chart, because if there are a lot of very negative aspects, that's the thing. If there are a lot of other negative aspects in the composite or in, uh, you know, chart inter aspects, this aspect could make this relationship a relationship that would otherwise end quickly, last for a long time, and just drag on and make the two people miserable because they still feel like, oh, they have something to work on and potentially it could be great, but they may not see that it's not worth it, not worth their time. And, well, to some extent, like I also mentioned in that other video that I'm going to be linking in the description, uh, this is a risk with all strong Saturn aspects and synastry that people might you know, um, invest too much time and energy in a relationship or a connection that might actually not be worth it because they think as long as I keep working towards it, you know, something's going to give eventually or something. That's the risk. Um, but still with a conjunction, if there are other positive aspects in synastry, also in the composite chart, like if you have, you know, let's say a strong sun moon connection as well, maybe Mars also trying Venus or something like that. Um, this can definitely be a great plus in a relationship, but it also has the downside that sometimes it can create um, difficulties in intimacy, not as much as, let's say, Saturn Mars, especially Saturn Mars hard aspects, um, but the Saturn v Venus can also create a certain, uh, let's say, coldness sometimes or... Um, struggles in expressing emotions to each other to the point where the both people kind of start doubting each other's affection. Um, and this, to some extent, can also be true for synastry inter aspects between two charts, but it's especially strong if you see it in the composite chart. Um, yeah, so again, really, it does depend a lot on what other aspects are there in the composite chart and also in between two charts. When it comes to the trine and sextile, I actually uh, see this. I wouldn't say that I see this often, but you can expect to see them in very long-lasting couples. So people who are together for decades, you know, decades, years, but especially decades. Uh, actually, what I have noticed over the years is that the people that have the longest relationships... Um, either have easy aspects in the composite chart between Venus and Saturn, like the trine, usually the trine or the sextile. Sometimes every once in a while I'll see a conjunction, um, but mainly the trine or the sextile, or they will have no aspect at all, or they will have like a minor aspect, like a semi-sextile or a quincunx. Uh, you know, so basically it's pretty rare that you're going to see like a square, <laughs> for a couple that has been, let's say, very, very long lasting. I'm talking years, decades, life, life, marriage and all that. OK, so some, this is something that I wanted to say about the composite chart. And now talking about the examples. So I have found a few famous examples. I'm going to start with the first one, my favorite my go-to example for long-lasting relationships, which I have mentioned in several other videos, namely Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward, who stayed together until I think he passed away. I think she's still alive. Um, right, but this is not too much into detail about them. This is about their Saturn-Venus situation. So he had Saturn in, um, let me see, 
right so what i see right off the bat what i have seen right off the bat is that uh, paul newman's venus mercury jupiter conjunction is conjunct joanne's saturn in sagittarius so in in their case and then also you have her venus sun moon conjunction in aquarius trine Paul Newman's Saturn in Libra. So in their situation, it's not only that they have, first of all, they also have the conjunction between their two charts. And then they also have a trine, but it's also involved with other planets, other major planets. So he has already has a multiple conjunction between his Venus, Mercury, and Jupiter, and that is conjunct Joanne Saturn. Okay, so this makes it particular. well, like I mentioned also in that video, because I, <laughs> I mentioned this now because since I have also mentioned them a lot, I mean, in the meantime, since I have started using them as an example, I also found out that actually their relationship was not perfect. And apparently, according to sources, there were instances of infidelity or whatever. So maybe there was also a little bit of that negative uh, impact of the Saturn energy and sinistry namely you know keeping people together in uh, relationships that are not great so they're not rosy uh if it was worth it who can tell who knows um but basically yes this is the risk with saturn is that it can lock people in relationships that are painful and maybe to some extent bring different yeah pain pains miseries obstacles you name it um, however, in their case, definitely it led to a very long lasting relationship as well, no matter how you will look at it. Um, but they also have a lot of great other aspects in uh, sinistry, um, inter aspects between their two charts as well as composite, if I remember correctly. And another example, Ellen DeGeneres and Portia de Rossi. <clears throat> Um, so Ellen DeGeneres' Saturn in Scorpio is trying Portia de Rossi's Venus Moon conjunction in Sagittarius. That's a stabilizing effect. Um, and also Ellen seems to be the one who is wearing the pants more in that relationship. Um, Venus, her Venus Sun conjunction in Capricorn con is uh, also semi sextile Portia de Rossi's Saturn in Taurus. So they have positive venus saturn relationships uh, aspect sorry but here again you see the fact that they also have other planets involved in these aspects which makes them particularly strong and influential with respect to the relationship and the longevity of the relationship because saturn soft aspects to some extent are stabilizing with in connection to any other planet basically almost uh with different outcomes depending on the planet so yeah so for instance they also have ellen saturn trine portia de rossi's moon um semi sextile sorry <laughs> right it's the other way i think the other way around so it's her so ellen saturn in scorpio is semi sextile portia de rossi's venus moon um, conjunction in Sagittarius and Ellen's Venus Sun in Capricorn is trying Portia de Rossi's Saturn in Taurus and again uh, you also have Portia de Rossi's Saturn trying Ellen DeGeneres's Sun so that's another strong stabilizing aspect as well and then you have Jay-Z and Beyonce another long-lasting uh, couple. Here it's um, only, well, Beyonce, first of all, has Saturn conjunct Venus in her, her natal horoscope. So she has Saturn, Jupiter, she actually has a cluster of planets, Saturn, Jupiter, Venus, Mercury, all conjunct in Virgo. And this multiple conjunction is, tr is uh, sextile Jay-Z's Venus in Scorpio. So... Yes, this can definitely be a stabilizing um, aspect. But once again, you see that there are multiple planets influencing it as well. So uh, it's even more influential. So you also have her Jupiter, her Mercury, um, you know, and also her Saturn 
and sorry, also her Venus. So you also have their Venus signs, Venus placements are in sextile, which, well, is definitely good for compatibility. Then another, this is an interesting one, actually. Um, Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson. I actually wrote this down because if I would have just looked at their um, chart inter aspects, I would have said, no way will this couple last, you know, because you have, they have the hard aspect. So they have um, his Saturn is opposite her Venus Jupiter conjunction. Sorry, it's square, not opposite. So his Saturn is in Scorpio and her Venus Jupiter conjunction is in Leo. And his Venus is in, is in Taurus and it's opposite Saturn in Scorpio. Well, first of all, if they would have had only the square, I would have said this is not a great combination. Um, but first of all, they have Saturn conjunct Saturn. That's pretty strong in stabilizing their relationship. That's probably because, yes, it is because they were born in the same year. Um, so that is a pretty, it is a plus in stabilizing the connection. But then having the square, you know, that's destabilizing. And then, but they also have the opposition, which, well, it's the least bad of the bad aspects. Um, because the opposition shows a back and forth and a balancing of energy. So I would, but just looking at these aspects, I would have said that these are more like a minus to the, to the relationship. However, when I looked at their composite chart, they have a trine. So they have Venus in Cancer, a trine, Saturn in Scorpio. So when it comes to their relationship itself, because the composite chart is kind of looking at the relationship as a third entity, it's, you know, this is actually a very strong, solid connection. You know, having the trine in the composite chart, it's, it's a very stabilizing aspect, shows long lasting affection. And not only that, but, well, they have the composite Venus basically trying each other's Saturns, um, and s which also plays out because when you analyze the composite chart, you also have to look at how each person relates to the relationship itself. So this shows that they feel nurtured. Both of them feel nurtured by the relationship. They also feel like the relationship is worth their investment of time, money, any kind of material resources. So yes, that can definitely explain um, having a very long lasting relationship. And uh, last but not least, I found Amal Clooney and George Clooney. Amal Clooney's um, time of birth is not known as far as I've seen at least, but they do have the conjunction. And once again, this conjunction is basically... Uh, flanked by multiple other planets. So her Venus Sun is in Capricorn. So she has a Venus Sun conjunction in Capricorn and it's conjunct his Saturn, Moon, Jupiter cluster in Capricorn. So they also have the Sun, Moon conjunction, right? They also have the Sun, Jupiter conjunction. But among all of these, you also have Venus and Saturn being conjunct in this cluster, which definitely shows long-lasting affection. Now, of course, these this is not as long-lasting of a couple as the other ones on the list, but already they show potential, right? And, and definitely, yeah, shows mature connection. So this is pretty much my analysis, and I hope that you have found it useful. And of course, please comment in the comment section with anything you would like to add or anything you would like to... I don't know, counter argue with. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, would definitely love to hear your personal experiences if you have had experiences with these aspects in Sinistry or other people that you know. And of course, if you like the video, please like, subscribe, hit the notifications bell to see when I will post a new video. And also, if you're interested in a personal consultation, I do consultations on a wide variety of topics. Please check out the video description. I will leave my contact information there. Thank you.